Hi, everybody, and welcome to the end of another week. The Olympics are on are upon us tomorrow. Eh. This is the, wow, okay. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Great start. I know. No. All right, well, wow. okay, but my, my point really being, that was just a, a natural transition to talk about the fact that we <laughs> talked about Olympic heroes a couple of weeks ago. Had some interesting uh, conversations around whether or not we should attach the word hero to some of our, our very accomplished athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons that we weren't so comfortable with it because they don't actually have superpowers, but today we were gonna talk about actual superpowers and that's because Miss Marvel has been it hasn't been announced that Miss Marvel is a um, uh, Kamala Khan and she is a Muslim Pakistani woman with some pretty cool superpowers including shape-shifting and other stuff that doesn't <laughs> include fairy dust or anything like that. I'm going to turn it over to Blair because he is our resident comic expert. Yes. Did okay. not call you a nerd. Did you no, see no, that? No, no, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but give us a little background on how that character came to be. Well, basically, in, in general, there's there actually have been characters before that um, were Muslim superheroes, but they were they were minor characters. They didn't have their own series. This is the first one on, on shelves right now. Because um, it's a ranking system. It, it is a ranking system. But the biggest thing is this is the first Marvel title that will feature um, a Muslim su Muslim superhero, and she's 16 years old. She's from New Jersey. Um, she I thought he said 60. I'm like, oh, wow, no. are you bad. She's also super. a senior citizen. <laughs> All the demographics. Super yeah. power. Um, but yeah, she basically what happens is the story seems a little loose. She falls asleep. New York City gets gasped with all the stuff, and she wakes up with, as you said. Um, unusual talents. She has shape-shifting abilities and all that kind of stuff. What's interesting is she has totally different powers than the original Miss Marvel, which could she could fly and she had like concussion blasts out of her hands and she had super strength. She has a very different set of, of powers. So I think what's interesting is it's basically showing Marvel's attempt to basically appeal to everyone, right? You know, you talk about this and a lot of people say if you look at it, think of a lot of the major superheroes and the, most of them are white and especially when it comes to girls they're white and then blonde like that's that's the majority so this is a way for them i think to show that you know the world is a giant melting pot so let's make the fantasy world a giant melting pot as well cool yeah do you think that this is, is, is it a token character though like are, are we seeing more minorities overall or is it just like that they're like oh we need to appease uh, this this group uh, i'm not saying it's a bad thing at all but is it more just like they're like Here's just a little bit, and then we're going to focus on more, you know, well, superhero white guys over here. Um, this is sort of a sidebar. Uh, we did a art show at uh, Creatory, and it was all uh, just before Comic Con. So there was a lot of comic book people there, and there was a local artist, and he had the a drawing of the front cover of Veldana, and I think she was a comic book figure with pre-war, like uh, like around the 40s or something like that, and they were Inuit, and they kind of stereo. You know, typed Eskimos living in igloos and whatever. But anyways, yeah, she had superpowers. But all the characters were Inuit. So okay, again, and that comic book is coming back. Going along with yeah. what uh, Tracy had said, is this a bigger shift that we're seeing? Blair, like you're, you're our expert here, Blair. I I'm like think, I'm outside uh, about of it. About a year ago, DC Comics, which is you know the sister competitor for Marvel Comics, came up with a Green Lantern, and his name is Simon Boss, and he's. Um, He's also Muslim. He's he becomes a Green Lantern, and they did it a, a little bit differently. There are critics that say it's a little sketchy the way he did it. If you know anything about a Green Lantern, when a Green Lantern dies, the ring leaves the Green Lantern and then finds someone else worthy of of a ring of the Green Lantern ring. And what I think is interesting about it is uh, when the when the ring finds you, it, it says. Um, like it would say, Kim Kasher, you are a person who possesses the ability to overcome great fear. You then you become a member of the Green Lantern Corps, and that's interesting in my head because I looked at all the things that the Muslim culture has had to overcome, and that I think that's a really great way of saying that. And even the character has a, a tattoo on his arm in Arabic that uh, supposedly says courage. Um, the only reason why I think they may not have done it as well is that's a really great statement, but then if you look at the character in full, his face is fully covered with a ski mask and he carries a gun, which is interesting because <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never sure. known a Green Lantern to carry a gun. I've known a Green Lantern 
to create a gun because he can create constructs that he could use. Um, wow, but I think they're I think they're doing it they, that incorrectly, right? They're almost completely hiding his identity, and then he's covered in spandex. Well, you would never know unless you know who he is, right? And even when he gets the ring, he's been arrested for stealing a car because he worked at an auto body, like he was an engineer that he worked at a factory. The stereotypes and yeah, and then he he, he, he goes to steal a van. And then he gets arrested, and then the ring comes to him because he's dealing with prejudice and racism, and his sister has just been attacked—a racist attack. So it, it's a lot of stuff like that. So it's it's interesting the way they do it. But this way, she's just a 16-year-old girl. All she has is like just the eye mask, and you can see the rest of her face. So yeah, I think that's it's a, a good question way. because it it, does, it seems like she, she doesn't play into stereotypes. So the very little that I've read about it, it sounds like she is first and foremostly a 16-year-old girl, um, and and secondly or third, thirdly or whatever, a Muslim, also just happens to be Muslim and Pakistani. But my question is, you know, obviously Marvel is, is in the business of making money. I mean, they're not in the business of trying to change stereotypes or to challenge, uh, you know, ideas of power and sex and religion. Um, but they see a market for this. Um, Ooh, uh, the interesting thing about this Muslim is American it's American. not <laughs> supposed, I read that it's not supposed to be an attention grab and they're defending themselves because it's actually based on the writer's own experiences growing up as a Pakistani American. Right. So I can, I can see that if it was just like a bunch of white men sitting around a table being yeah. like, we need to have more women and we need to have more minorities. Let's do this. But it's right. actually based on our own experiences and I, I respect that and I think that it comes from a good place. Right? Yeah, no, and I, and I yeah. don't think that, uh, I don't think that's a bad thing, but it is a business, and so yeah. they they see a woman with a story like that, they recognize there are other Muslim kids growing up without superheroes that they can see their own faces in, and so they say there is a market for this, and they go for it, hoping that they're not going to alienate any other markets at the same time. Um, do you think that this is, that this that it will work? Do you think that, um, that America is ready for that kind of, that, that kind of boldness, do you think that we are? I, I don't even, I don't know, there's a lot of uh, even attention to this, this Coke ad that came out like uh, at, the, at the Super Bowl, where they had, uh, I believe they had minorities oh, saying America yes. the Beautiful, yeah. and like a lot of negative attention, and yeah. I, I would hope that America's ready for it, and I'd hope that actually just the storyline is good enough that it carries it, and we don't even care if she's yeah. Muslim yeah. or if she's a woman or whatever, and it's just a, a well-written story. but. There are some times, especially, uh, that, that, that America shocks me with, uh, yeah, prejudice. The thing with, with Marvel, too, is right now, I kind of see both sides of it. I see how, it, it, as a business, they're appealing to another target audience, which is what all businesses do. It's what TV does. It's, that's yeah. what we do. But it's also... They're also moving to other things. I think it just might be fluke, because they also have a string of female lead titles coming out. They have Black Widow and all these different characters that are now becoming... But yeah, no so again, movies. Movies. No, that's right. Yeah, so again, no, I yeah. want to take yeah. that and I want to bring it a little bit further, like into society then. So if Marvel yeah. is doing that, but do you see that happening? Do you see it being effective in that kind of messaging in, in movies, in things like that? I don't know. I, are we ready for that? Well, it could just are we be, ever going to well, be ready for it? Well, it could just be the, the starting of something, though. If, yeah. they're, if they're just starting to release these series of, uh, of graphic novels, comic books, then, like, usually, it's year, a few years later, the movies come along. We had, uh, we had uh, Elektra, right? Mm -hmm. She, I don't know, yeah, yeah, you made the face, but I never saw the movie, right? So that, that, that led to a movie which maybe led to some empowerment. I don't know. But if they're actually better characters and they're actually not just based on stereotypes or like spandex and you know, and they mm -hmm. actually have a good storyline behind um, yeah. it, it could be the beginning of something. Awesome, I thanks. Think, uh, sorry to cut you off, Tracy. We're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna talk about losing some of your power. Um, next. <laughs>